Welcome my dear learners for this course on design of machine elements 1. In this module 1 we were discussing on stress concentration. In this final lecture of our discussion on module 1 let us solve the final problem on stress concentration. The problem 8 of our discussion on stress concentration states that a stepped shaft shown in figure 8 is subjected to a transverse load. The shaft is made of steel with ultimate tensile strength of 400 mega pascal. Determine the diameter D of the shaft based on the factor of safety of 2. So this is the sketch figure 8 given for us. If you carefully observe, it is a simply supported beam having supports A and B loaded with a force F 8 kN eccentrically. It is not loaded exactly at the center. If it would have been loaded exactly at the center, then the support reactions will be F by 2, F by 2. You are correct. If it is loaded exactly at the center, then the reactions will be F by 2 and F by 2. Since it is not loaded exactly at the center, because here the distance to the reaction A is 350 millimeters, whereas distance to reaction B from load is 150 millimeters. Since it is not exactly at the center, our first aim is to determine how much is the support reaction RA and RB. Later on, we can inspect what is the diameter that is recommended for the given simply separated beam with the load 8 kN. Come let us solve this problem. This is figure 8 given for us. If I move for solution of the final problem of our discussion on stress concentration that is problem number 8. Since it is a simply supported beam loaded eccentrically where the concentrated load is not exact at the center, first thing is to find out the support reaction. So we know how to find the support reaction. The first condition is sum of forces must be equal to 0. Ra and Rb are acting upwards. So therefore Ra plus Rb minus F must be equal to 0. So therefore I will get one equation as Ra plus Rb is equal to 8 into 10 to the power of 3 newtons correct now the second condition is take moment about any of the support a or b and equate it to 0 you will get one of the reaction this you people already know so therefore let me take moment about a and equate it to 0 now if i take moment at a r a into distance from a is 0 so therefore it is 0 next coming over here it is f acting clockwise into 350 is the distance and rb is acting counterclockwise and 500 is the distance so therefore f into 350 clockwise f into 350 clockwise minus rb i am taking moment at a minus rb into 500 is causing counterclockwise this should be equal to 0. Now if I rearrange and solve, I will get the value of Rb as F is 8 into 10 to the power of 3 into distance is 350 divided by 500. So therefore support reaction Rb will be 8 into 10 to the power of 3 into 350 divided by 500 which is turning out to be 5000 600 newtons so this is the value of support reaction rb now if i make use of equation 1 where ra plus rb is equal to 8 into 10 to the power of 3 newtons we'll get the value of ra as that is from equation 1 support reaction ra will be equal to 8 into 10 to the power of 3 minus rb that is 5600 hence support reaction Ra will become 2400 Newton. So we have found out the value of support reaction Ra and Rb. Ra is found to be 2400 Newton and Rb is found to be 5600 Newton. The support reactions are not same and also if you carefully observe the fillet radius is also not same. The left fillet as d by 10 as the fillet radius, the right fillet as d by 5 as the fillet radius so therefore individually we should analyze then only we can find out what is the recommendable diameter d for this simply supported beam for this loading condition so therefore let me analyze 
left fillet first so if i move for left fillet analysis of left fillet we will get a cantilever beam like this so we have 4 cf acting where the diameter is 2d and we have a fillet of d by 10 leading to a diameter d where we have a support ra and this support magnitude ra is 2400 newton and this is the stress concentration region and this is the failure arm through visual inspection so therefore i should design for this arm so hence here the distance is 250 and this is the point of stress concentration where the accumulation of maximum stress takes place because this region acts as the stress riser because of geometric discontinuity here we have the fillet radius as d by 10 this is given as diameter d and this is given as diameter 2d so now this is our actual problem now we know how to solve stress concentration problems we should always compare the given problem to figures 2.11 to 2.30 and choose appropriate diagram or graph by observing the geometric discontinuity and also the loading case so here if i compare this to this given range of figures i observed that from figure from figure 2.25 referring to page number 43 referring to page number 43 we have stepped shaft stepped shaft in bending we have stepped shaft in bending so if i carefully observe that graph we have the value of stress concentration factor kt in y axis and in the x axis we have the ratio of r by d and we have the curves of d by d now if i calculate the value of r by d it is given as d by 10 into d so 1 by 10 will be 0 0.1 coming for d by d it is 2d by d is 2 so therefore if i mark 0 0.1 and intersect 2 d by d of 2 and come horizontally towards left like this i'll get the value bit less than 1.75 hence i'll choose it as 1.74 1.74 now use the definition of stress concentration factor kt kt is sigma max by sigma nominal where sigma max is given by sigma ultimate by factor of safety he has specified the ultimate tensile strength as 400 hence i will get 400 by 2 is the factor of safety so therefore maximum allowable stress will be 200 mega pascals now i can find what is the value of sigma nominal so if i move ahead and calculate i will get sigma nominal as sigma max by stress concentration factor hence sigma nominal will be how much it is 200 divided by 1.74 which is 114.94 mega pascals 114.94 mega pascals now for pure bending we know what is the formula for sigma nominal we know that sigma nominal for bending is given by bending moment mb by z section modulus in the figure 2.25 itself he has specified the value of section modulus or else we can all we also know that section modulus for a circular cross section is given by pi d cube by 32 and bending moment for cantilever beams is given by force into distance so therefore if i substitute and solve we have sigma nominal as 114.92 bending moment is force into distance that is 2400 into 250 divided by pi d cube by 32 pi d cube by 32 is the section modulus for 
circular cross section or else it is also given in figure 2.25 page number 43 so therefore if i solve i'll get the value of diameter as 2400 into 250 into 32 divided by 114.92 into pi cube root of this is turning out to be 37.6 37.6 millimeters this is the diameter that we have found out from left fillet similarly we should analyze for right fillet also so therefore in case 2 you analyze right fillet so considering the right fillet I will get the diagram like this we have 2D we have a fillet of D by 5 and leading to diameter D where we have a support rb where we have support rb the distance from the fillet arm is 25 millimeters 25 millimeters and this is d and this is 2d and the fillet radius is d by 5 d by 5 now if I analyze the right fillet from the same graph that is from figure 2.25 referring to page number 43 that is stepped shaft in bending stepped shaft in bending we have R by D and D by D ratio calculation so if I do that x axis is r by d inside we have d by d curves and y axis represents theoretical stress concentration factor kt so if I compute the value of r by d and d by d the ratio of capital diameter to small diameter is turning out to be 2 whereas the radius is given as one fifth of smaller diameter it is d by 5 so cancelling of the smaller diameters, I will get the ratio of radius to diameter as 1 by 5 which is nothing but 0 0.2. So on the x-axis marking 0 0.2, move ahead and intersect d by d ratio as 2 and come horizontally towards left. From the graph, we can read the value of theoretical stress concentration factor as bit less than 1.45. Let me take it as 1.44 let me take it as 1.44 we have found out the value of stress concentration factor referring to figure 2.25 page number 43 which is stepped shaft in bending now from the definition we have kt is equal to sigma max by sigma nominal whereas sigma max is sigma ultimate by n so therefore I will get sigma nominal as sigma max is sigma ultimate is 400 by n is 2 into kt is 1.44 hence I will get sigma nominal as 400 by 2 into 1.44 which is turning out to be 138.89 mega pascals now for pure bending case we know nominal stress formula that is sigma nominal is equal to bending moment by section modulus z where z is 32 mb th pi d cube by 32 section modulus for circular cross section is pi d cube by 32 bending moment for cantilever beam is load into distance so therefore sigma nominal is already known to me it is 138.89 which is equal to RB is 5600 distance is 25 divided by pi times D cube by 32 so therefore diameter will become 5600 into 32 into 25 divided by pi times 138.89 cube root of this is nothing but 21.73
ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट सेवन फ्रॉम दी लेफ्ट फिलेट वी फाउंड आउट डी एस थर्टी फ्रॉम द राइट फिलेट वी हैव फाउंड आउट दैट डायमीटर एस ट्वेंटी वन For safer design, we should always adopt higher diameter. Hence, adopt D as 37.6, which is equal to 38 mm. Hence, the value of capital diameter 2D will be 38 into 2. That is 76 millimeters. So. The solution for this problem is smaller diameter is 38 mm, whereas the larger diameter 2D is 76 millimeters. This is how you should solve the problems on simply supported beam, where you have the concentrated load loaded eccentrically. If it would have been loaded exactly at the center, then no need to calculate the support reaction directly. You can write R A is equal to R B is equal to F by 2. That is 4 kN each, and analyze the problem provided the fillet radius are same. Even for the same problem if it is loaded centrally we should analyze separately left fillet and right fillet this is because of the reason the fillet radius is not same for left and right fillet so this completes our discussion on stress concentration and also module 1 from next lecture let us move ahead for module 2 wherein which we will be discussing on design for fatigue strength and impact strength that's all from this lecture thank you all